Hi, I'm Ed China, and what car has asked me to talk to you about vans? Why? Well, yes, indeed, I have motorised everything from beds to bathroom suites, but not everything in my life actually can move under its own steam. And therefore, as an engineer, inventor and mechanic, I often find myself having to lug all kinds of things around the country. And so therefore, I've owned a lot of vans, and that means I know exactly what makes a good one. So grab yourself a mug of tea and a couple of digestives to dunk in it, and let us guide you through the world of commercial vehicles. We'll show you which ones are the best and which ones are best avoided. In fact, before you do anything else, make sure you don't miss any of my future reviews. Click subscribe below. All done? Good. Now, what was I going to talk to you about today? Oh yes, the Volkswagen Transporter. Now, it's not unusual in the tech world to add a 0.1 to something to signify an update or a new revision. But what is unusual is that Volkswagen have done exactly that to their new recently revised T6, or rather the T6.1. So what's different? Well, at the front, there's a reshaped bumper and narrower headlights that merge into the deeper front grille. But more significantly, the transporter has switched to electromechanical steering, which has allowed Volkswagen to introduce driver safety aids such as lane keeping assist and crosswind assist, with the latter standard across the range. What hasn't changed is you can still choose from short or long wheelbase and standard medium and edge spec roof heights. You also still have the option of Volkswagen's four motion four wheel drive system. Maximum interior length is 2,572 millimeters for the short wheelbase, or to put it another way, 50 millimeters more than the equivalent Ford Transit Custom offers. But the long wheelbase is 50 millimeters down on the equivalent custom at 2,975 millimeters. The Transporter now matches most of its rivals in having a load-through bulkhead hatch, which gives you an extra 400 millimetres of space for particularly long loads. If you've owned Volkswagen vans in the past, you'll know that the cabins are often about as interesting to look at as the load areas, but that's definitely not a criticism that can be levelled at the modern transporters. It's properly smart in here, and you can have technology that's only been just made available for Volkswagen cars, including things like a Siri-style voice command system that allows natural speech rather than having to remember specific commands. There's also a touchscreen infotainment system that ranges from 6.5 to 8 inches in size and incorporates Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, while wireless phone charging is an option. Upgrading from the entry-level start line trim to the more expensive high line brings adaptive cruise control, front and rear parking sensors, air conditioning and a second 12-volt power socket. And you can even specify digital instruments, which are able to show everything from a sat-nav map to the blueprints to my latest invention. Probably. Look beyond the glamour of the tech and the smart design though, and the interior is just as functional as ever. And I mean that as a compliment. Even the start line has a height adjustable driver's seat and four-way adjustable lumbar support to ease the pain of those long driving shifts. Plus, there's some useful storage space in this top section of the dashboard, and over on the passenger side, you have this open glove box, and beneath that, this very narrow shelf, which is rubberized, which is ideal for things like keys and mobile phones. The two cup holders at the base of the windscreen pillars are a little bit shallow, so you may have to drive a bit more carefully just to avoid getting the T into your lap. Now, you may remember me mentioning earlier that the Transporter has now got electromechanical steering, and that's had a real effect on the way that the van drives. Where the previous setup felt overly light and a bit floaty, this new setup feels far more precise. And that really helps with straight line stability, but also the confidence in maneuvering and cornering. In fact, like the bigger crafter, the Transporter T6.1 disguises its size really well. Passenger versions were given a redesigned front suspension in the recent upgrade. But while panel vans have to do without that, the ride is impressively smooth, even when there isn't much in the back. The latest emissions regulations have forced many van manufacturers to adopt new engines. But Volkswagen's two-litre diesel has only needed to have its exhaust system reworked in order to meet the much tougher standard. You can choose from 89, 108 or 148 brake horsepower versions. Or if you're really in a hurry to complete your deliveries, there's a twin turbocharged version of the engine that produces 196 brake horsepower. Our recommendation would be the 148 horsepower version because the balance of power and torque makes it ideal for slow city driving and also slightly faster motorway miles while keeping the costs down. All transporters have either a 5 or 6 speed manual as standard, 
but the seven speed DSG automatic I'm using here is definitely the option we would go for. Not only is it impressively smooth, it also allows the van to bring itself to a complete standstill when you're using adaptive cruise control, which is brilliant in traffic jams. In summary then, the Transporter 6.1 is significantly better than the T6, and that wasn't exactly shabby. The new model has the most car-like cabin in a van on the market, both in terms of technology, but also thanks to the quality of materials. And yet, it's actually more practical than ever, thanks to the load-through bulkhead hatch and also the improved storage around the driver. Add in the improved steering and more advanced safety systems, and it's definitely worth considering if you're in the market for a new mid-size van. It gets a wonderful four-star watt car rating, and it's definitely got the Ed Factor. If you want to be notified about future van video reviews from me, then do click subscribe. And as a rather lovely bonus, you'll also get to see all of what car's excellent car reviews as they're posted. See you next time.